Hey, good morning and welcome to OPBC Online. We're excited to have you with us here this morning. If you're a member of Old Powhatan, uh, let me just say again that we cannot wait till we can gather together in person. But for now, we, uh, we are super grateful for the technology that's available for us to reach out in this way and be able to have this content out available for you. So we welcome you, anybody that's watching us online. We want to direct you to our website. We have plenty of uh, content and resources there that are available for you to uh, to look at um, and some resources available for your family as well to uh, as we kind of are all gathered together uh, here this morning. Uh, members of Old Powhatan, I want to encourage you to continue to give. You can give online. There are a number of ways to give if you, uh, again, go to our church website. If you are a member of another church, we're, we're, we're glad that you're watching us this morning, but we want to encourage you to continue to give to your local church. But for now, we are excited to bring the Word of God to you this morning. We're excited to have this available to you. And so uh, would you join me now as we pray this morning? Father, we thank you so much for, for technology, God. We thank you that we do have this opportunity, that despite these uh, circumstances, these trying times, that we still have opportunities and resources to proclaim your Word. So we ask this morning as we are gathering in our living rooms and as we are watching our screens that you would still glorify yourself through this means and we know that we can trust you to do that and so we look forward to a time where um, we sing together that we hear the word preached together and that you are exalting yourself still we thank you it's in jesus name we pray these things amen read along with me from second corinthians 5 14 through 21 for the love of christ controls us because we have concluded this that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In just a couple of moments, we want to share with you another of our testimonies from one of our church members that tells you how Jesus has changed their life. And, and we're asking you to send in these testimonies to us, video testimony of one to two minutes to tell us what change Jesus has made in your life. Maybe it's a, a recent change in the way you've thought about the world, the way you thought about family, whatever it may be, because we believe Jesus changes everything. Or it might be your conversion story and how Jesus saved you and brought you to salvation. We, we want to hear these stories. We want to be able to share these stories because they'll be an encouragement to each other. We also are in this time of prayer together uh, for our world. And in the next four weeks, we're actually going to spend four weeks of concerted prayer, praying for our world, praying for our nation, praying for our neighbors, praying for our families, praying for our own hearts in the middle of this pandemic. We're praying that this ends quickly. And, and actually, we're in that process now of praying through what it looks like to get back to a new normal. So how do we pray well? So we want to give you two resources for that. Uh, each week we're going to have some prayer points that are put out by the SBC of Virginia, our state convention. And we're going to ask you to join with us in praying uh, through those. So each Monday and throughout the week you're going to see prayer points and how we can pray together. The second is we want to give you a resource, an opportunity to download a free ebook. So we have a deal with uh, the Good Book Company that's giving us this uh, ebook that we are going to give to you for free uh, called Five Things to Pray in a Global Crisis. We want to we want to make this available to you. So all you have to do is reach out to us at office at powhatanbaptist.org and tell us you want the free ebook. And we're going to give you the link and we're going to give you a promo code so you can download that for free as a tool for praying for our own hearts and praying for our world 
in the midst of this pandemic. For now, let's hear how Jesus changes lives. We want you to hear this story from one of our members. So my story in Christ is very similar to, to many that grew up in the, the southeastern portion of the United States. Um, knowing the name of Christ, going to church from an early age, being surrounded by people who were familiar with the name of Christ and the message of the gospel. Um, you know, many generations of my family and the generations of the families around me uh, had always been in those same churches, had always heard the name of Christ. Uh, case in point, here are five generations worth of Bibles going from my kids all the way to my great-grandparents. So, you know, here's, that's, that's kind of been my heritage and, and what I have always grown up around. The problem with that, even though it's, it's an incredibly wonderful thing to have, to have that background, the, the temptation for me is to assume that everyone around me already knows uh, what I know about Christ. Um, and and that's, a, that's a dangerous thing. It, you can get very complacent. So what God has been opening my heart up to is, is letting me know that that's, it, it's not an excuse to just say that, well, you told me about Christ, God. You can tell others just as easily. Well, if he made the provision to put all those generations before me to ensure that I heard the name of Christ and, and came to know him, then I need to be reaching out to those around me to make sure that they know the name of Christ. Um, he can work however he wants. He doesn't need me. But if he's given me, if he's been that gracious to me, then I need to use the gift that he's given me and to reach out to the people around me. He's opened my eyes to that recently. So, so my prayers uh, have been more missionally focused than, than ever before. So um, I need to have the obedience to, to step out in the faith that he's already provided uh, to reach out to those around me. Up to the hill of Calvary, my Savior went courageously. And there he bled and died for me, hallelujah for the cross. And on that day the world was changed, a final perfect lamb was slain. Let earth and heaven now proclaim, hallelujah for the cross, hallelujah. has lost hallelujah for the souls he bought hallelujah for the cross what good i've done could never save my debt too great for deeds to pay but god my savior made a way hallelujah for the cross was bound, but all my chains fell to the ground, when Jesus' blood came flowing down, hallelujah for the cross, hallelujah for the war he fought, love has won, death has lost, hallelujah for the souls he fought, hallelujah for the cross and when I breathe my final breath I'll have no need to fear that rest my hope will guide me into death hallelujah for the cross hallelujah for the war he fought love has won death has lost hallelujah for the souls he fought hallelujah for the cross hallelujah for the war he fought love has won death has lost hallelujah for the souls he fought hallelujah for the cross Hallelujah for 
the cross, hallelujah for the cross.
As we come to God's Word today, we continue in our series called Changed. Jesus really does change everything in the life of the believer. Over the past couple of weeks, in the beginning of this series, we've talked about the the major change, the overarching change that Jesus makes when he extends his grace to us and it's received by faith, when he does that work in us. And that ultimate change that happens is we're first justified before God. Once we were guilty, and now he has declared us innocent. He has wiped the slate clean and has even given us the righteousness of Christ. We also read in Scripture that we are reconciled to God. What good news that is, is that once we were enemies of God, and now he makes us even into family members and friends, and so we are secure in him. And last week we began here with our passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to continue in that today. Last week we looked at verse 17 in particular, and and really two words that lay the groundwork for all of the blessings that come from being in being a believer. And that those two words are in Christ. That we are told in verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Not that we've just been made better, but that we've been made new. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This is the ultimate change that God is making, is he's making us new. He's making us new in Christ. All the blessings of God are found in Christ. All of the all of the benefits of salvation are found in Christ. All of our security, all of our hope, all of our joy, all of our life is now found in Christ. And, and our desire always is for you to know Christ so that you will have that life as well. So we wanted to talk today about the major change that happens in our perspective and in our purpose. If we are new creatures in Christ, if we have come to Christ by faith and we trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and everything changes, then our whole perspective on life, our perspective on people, our perspective on ourselves, our perspective on Jesus and our purpose for life changes completely. So would you look at the passage of scripture that we just read just a few moments ago? And I want to remind us of what God's word tells us today. Verse 14 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says this, for the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might not live, might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is What we are after as believers is to understand what it is to be in Christ. And when we're in Christ, how that changes our perspective and changes our purpose in life. See, the the big change that happens when we're justified and reconciled is that we no longer live for ourselves. That's what verse 15 tells us. He died so that those of us who live in him might not live for ourselves any longer, that we instead live for him who for our sake died and was raised. We no longer live for ourselves. Yet we now have a new perspective. We now have a new purpose. And this is a change that happens with every believer. As we mature in Christ, as we grow in Christ, as we, as we experience all the, all the love and the joy and the acceptance of being in Christ, all of the power of his spirit in our lives, all of the transformation that happens, he changes our perspective and he changes our purpose. So first today I want to look at this changed perspective. And the way the passage puts it is this, verse 16, from now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. We have a changed perspective when it comes to the people around us. We no longer regard people according to the flesh. He says, from now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, 
we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. See, what Paul is telling us here is this phrase, in this phrase, according to the flesh, he, he's talking about how we often judge people by the world's standards, by when we first pe- meet people or we talk about people or we, we look at people and we consider people, what we really do is we consider them according to standards and, and categories that the world gives us. Standards like race and their socioeconomic position, their status, their education, their gender. Those are the first things we notice about people. Those are the first things that we judge people on. Those are the first things that we regard people according to. And so we have a tendency to put people into boxes. And and there are multiple boxes that people fit into in our world because the world has all kinds of standards and guidelines and boxes for people. But there are only two boxes in which people should be put. People are either in Christ or they are not in Christ. Those are the only two types of people there are in the world. This is what verse 17 tells us. Because we are new creatures in Christ, we understand that people are either in Christ or they're not. We're new creatures, and so we can think about people and have a perspective about people that is utterly changed. We no longer look at people and judge them according to things that Jesus doesn't judge them by. Jesus created this this humanity that reflects his glory, and his concern is for people of all tribes, all tongues, all nations, and he brings them all into this one reality. You are either in Christ or you are not in Christ. And so this change that's happened in us as believers then changes the way we look at the people around us. And and this idea of being a new creation, this new creature in Christ, really brings to mind what's going to happen in the end with this new heavens and this new earth, this, this reality in which all believers will live forever, where everything is made new, all is made new. The old truly passes away and all is made new. And because we're new creatures in Christ now, We become like little microcosms of that kingdom of heaven that's coming and coming soon. Everywhere we go, we take the kingdom of heaven with us. We take God's kingdom with us. We we don't look at people then through the lens of the world. We look at people through the lens of the kingdom of heaven. We don't regard people according to the flesh. This really bears itself out in the way we deal with one another relationally. And I want you to think about that. We don't look for worldly value in people. We're not first concerned with how, how they can serve us. We don't think too highly of ourselves and too lowly of others. We, we can consider others as more important than ourselves. We don't judge people by their so-called worth to us, what they can add to our lives. We don't regard people according to their worldly success. We don't regard people according to their status or their stature in this world. We don't regard ourselves in this way either. He says we don't regard anyone according to the flesh, including ourselves. We don't look at ourselves in, in our status and our ability. We, we don't look at ourselves in our righteousness or self-righteousness. No, we regard ourselves as in Christ. And being in Christ, we recognize the grace that's available, the grace that's necessary, the mercy that's been poured out on us. And because we regard ourselves now through that spiritual lens, through that heavenly lens, through that kingdom of God lens, then we have grace and mercy to extend to others. And this really all comes down to what he says, because now not only do we not regard others and ourselves in a worldly way with the eyes of the world according to the flesh, we no longer regard Jesus in that way either. And this really, this really is a big deal for Paul, being a Pharisee of the Pharisees, one of the Jews of the Jews. Jesus being a, a Jew, Paul looked at Jesus and his claims. Before Paul was saved, before Paul was converted, before Paul's road to Damascus moment, where he's blinded and the blinders are taken off and he's seen Jesus in all of his glory and now Paul is utterly changed to the core as a new creature, he saw Jesus according to the flesh. Jesus was nothing more than a false prophet. Jesus was nothing more than a blasphemer. Jesus was nothing more than one who was crucified. He was a curse to the people of of Israel. And so Paul, before knowing Christ by grace through faith, 
regarded Jesus according to the flesh. Now he no longer regards Jesus in that way. And, and all of us who have placed our faith in Jesus, we're the same. We, we've come to place our faith in Jesus because he's now been revealed in all of his glory. We know, we know that Jesus is not a failed king. We know that he's a victorious savior. We understand that Jesus is not a crazy blasphemer claiming to be God, but that he truly is the compassionate Lord who sits on his throne. And when we regard Jesus as he is, not as we wish he was, nor according to the flesh, wishing he had been stronger and stood up for his rights. No, we, we see Jesus laying down his life for his sheep. And we revel in that. We rejoice in that. We find peace in that. We find comfort. We find life in the Christ who gave himself for us. We no longer judge others by worldly standards. We no longer judge ourselves by worldly standards. We can never hold ourselves above anyone else. But we regard others as more important than ourselves. We can serve others because we no longer regard Jesus accord, according to worldly standards, according to the flesh. He is the Lord. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. When we see Jesus for who he is and we are found in Christ and our life is hidden in him, our whole perspective changes. People are either in Christ or not in Christ because now we see them through the eyes of spiritual lenses of, of the kingdom of heaven, through the eyes of our Savior who gave himself for them, who laid down his life for us and for them. That changes our perspective. But it also changes our purpose. You know, we can all have different jobs. We can all have different ways we work out our purpose. But once we are in Christ Jesus, once we are believers in Jesus, we have one purpose in life. We have one calling in life. It's not many callings. It's many ways to accomplish one calling. And the text bears this out for us. Look back at what the word of the Lord says. Look at verse 16 that we just read, right? We no longer regard anyone according to the flesh, and then verse 17, we're now new creatures, which then he leads us into. Therefore, we have a new mission, a new purpose. Look at verse 18. All this is from God who through Christ. So all of this reconciliation, all of this new creatureliness, all of this idea of regarding people no longer according to the flesh is from God. And when we regard people through spiritual eyes, through kingdom of heaven eyes, through Christ's eyes, then this is what that draws us into. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. We have the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. And look at this identifying factor now. We've already been told that we are in Christ. We've already been told that we are new creatures. And the next thing he tells us that we are, he says this in verse 20, therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We have a changed purpose. We have a changed mission. We have a message that comes directly from God, entrusted to us, because now we are ambassadors for Christ. We have one calling, one identity. It works itself out in a bunch of different ways. You might be a mechanic. You might be a doctor. You might be a nurse. You might be a lawyer. Uh, you might be a stay-at-home mom. You might be a pastor. You might work HVAC. Right? You, you could work in all kinds of areas, but if you are in Christ Jesus, you have one calling, one mission, one purpose. You are an ambassador for Christ. We are, in, we are ambassadors entrusted by God. We have a message of reconciliation that's been entrusted to us by God. He says to us, now that I, I have placed my spirit in you and you are found in Christ, I am giving to you, I'm entrusting to you the message, the same message that reconciled you, I'm giving to you to take to everyone else. This is the message of the kingdom. We are, we are going into the world with the message of our king. And that is be reconciled to God through Christ. We are commissioned by him, entrusted by him to go and make disciples, to tell people that they can be reconciled to God through Christ. 
This ministry has been given to us by his desire and his design. It's entrusted to us. He's reconciled us so that we go and take the message of reconciliation. And we don't get to decide what the message is. The message is set. It, this message of reconciliation is his message, and he gives it to us. In the same way that if you were an ambassador for the United States and you were in Iraq, France, anywhere in the world, and you were the U.S. ambassador, you don't speak of your own accord. You speak what you are told to speak because you represent the nation of the United States. You don't represent yourself. And today, if you are a follower of Christ, you are an ambassador of Christ. You represent him and the message. The message is clear. Be reconciled to God in Christ Jesus. He reconciled us by giving his life for us, by rising from the dead that we might live with him. We now can be reconciled. So in essence, what we are is reconciled reconcilers. We are the people who have been reconciled so that we can go and take the message of reconciliation. That's what the passage tells us very plainly. Look at verse 19. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. We are reconciled to take the message of reconciliation. This is our identity. God is making his appeal to the world through us, be reconciled to God. So we implore people, and we implore you today, if you're hearing this message, if you have not trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, know this, that he died so that you can live. He died so that you would not have to die for your sins, so that you would not have to die an eternal death for the sin debt that you and I all owe. Every human being, guilty before God, And Jesus took that guilt and that shame upon himself so that all those who would trust in him would be forgiven, would be set free, set right with God, reconciled to God, and brought into the family of God to have eternal life with him. This is what God has offered us in Christ Jesus. This is what God has accomplished for us in Christ Jesus. And he's making an appeal through us today to you to say, be reconciled to God. Trust him. Call upon him. Cry out to the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Say, Father, I need a Savior. Jesus, I want you to be my Savior. I need to be be changed, transformed by Jesus Christ who not, not only is the one who gives life, but he's the one who took away my death and my debt. And trust him today. We, we, We need to be people as believers who are imploring others to believe Jesus Christ, to trust Jesus Christ, to be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. And so if you're a believer on this on this stream today and you're watching, whatever your job is, whatever you do for a living is not your identity. No, you are an ambassador for Christ. Making a plea to the world, be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Make that the message, make that the purpose, make that what your life is all about. How can you use your family time, your your time at work? How can you use the relationships that you have here? All of those things as as tools to be used that others would be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. This is who we are now. We are reconciled reconcilers, ambassadors for Christ. And, and another way he puts it, another identifying factor is that we are new creatures. And, and this new creatureliness looks like this. We now have and possess and are the righteousness of Christ. All of our unrighteousness was given to Jesus. All of his righteousness now given to us. All of our sinfulness and selfishness and self-righteousness now given to Jesus. All of his perfect obedience to the Father now given to our account before God. And this is who we are so we can tell the world be reconciled to God. No matter how self-righteous you are, no matter how unrighteous you are. God reconciles people to himself through Jesus Christ. We are creatures. We are new creatures of righteousness. We have a changed perspective. We have a changed purpose. But what is the root of all this change? What is the root of this changed perspective and this changed purpose? How how does 
how are we motivated in all of this? What, what, what happens? What kind of mindset, what kind of reality do we tap into to know that we, ha- we should have this different perspective? Why is this perspective and this purpose actually accomplished in our lives? How does that happen? And the text tells us very plainly how that happens. Look back at the text real quick and see what it says. Look at verse 14. For the love of Christ controls us. We are hemmed in. We, we can't go left or right. We have one direction we can go. That's what it means to be controlled here. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. The love of God shown to us in Christ controls us, compels us, hems us in, puts us on one path with this new perspective and this new purpose. We have a new perspective and new purpose. We are single-minded and single-missioned because we have a singular love from our Father shown to us in Jesus Christ. It's not, when, when he says that the love of Christ compels us, this love compels us, it's not the love that we have for God, it's the love that he has for us. The type of love that would send his son to die for us. The type of love that would lay down his life for his friends. So we're not banking on how much we can love God. We're banking on how much he loves us. And it's the type of love that hems us in and compels us to move forward. It's the type of love that embraces us and holds us. It's the type of love that when we want to run in 50 different directions, grabs our arms, pulls us close and says, no, 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 calm down. I love you. This is who you are. Let's move in the direction that you are called to do. I have a singular perspective and a singular purpose for you. Walk in that truth. You are in Christ Jesus. That's the type of love that God has for us. The love of God controls us. It's a love that's shown in the cross. He gave his life for us. He he died for us. It's a love shown to us in his substitution. He died for us. He died in our place. It's a love shown to us in the resurrection. He's raised that we would have life. It's a love shown in his reconciliation. He's reconciled us that we can now be agents of that reconciliation. It's a love shown in our union to Christ, that now we are one with Christ. And so all of the love that God has for his son, he he now has for us. He loves us as he loves his son. He he has a never-ending love for us, an overabounding love for us. The love of God controls us. Not our love for Him, but His love for us. And now we can say with Paul that the life we live is not our own. That we're bought with a price. We belong to Him. That The life we live now, we live to God. We live by faith in Christ. See, the purpose of Jesus' death was that we would live for Him. The purpose of Jesus dying and rising again is that you and I would now live for him. This is the great exchange and the great change that happens through Jesus and in Christ. So we cannot, we can no longer live by our own standards. We can no longer live by our own rules, but we're compelled, we're controlled by the love of Christ. Not by the rules of Christ, we're compelled by the love of Christ now to love him back. We love because he first loved us. We, We rejoice in him and glorify him because he has reconciled us because he has loved us so we now can no longer live by our own standards and rules we live under the rule of his love and we can no longer live with our own purpose our perspective our purpose utterly changed by the love of jesus christ see jesus truly does change everything in the life of the believer When you come in contact with Jesus, you either receive him and accept him for who he is. He's not going to change for you. No, he's going to change you. You either receive him and accept him for who he is, or we reject him because he's not who we wish he was. or He's not who we want him to be. And so today, what are you going to do with Jesus? Being in Christ, found in him, secure in him, loved by him, now living in him. We have not just a renewed perspective on life and a renewed purpose in life. We have a new perspective and a new purpose in life. We have a new relationship with God. We have a 
a reconciled relationship with God. We have a new identity. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Today, we want that for you. If you're a believer in Christ, we want you to live in that reality. This is real for believers in Christ. This is not imagined. This isn't something that's just for the select few people who really figure it out. This is for every believer that we are in Christ Jesus and we have a singular mission and a singular mindset. We have a single perspective. People are either in Christ or not. We see them in that way and that compels us because of the love that's been shown to us to reconcile us to God in Christ Jesus, to go and say, be reconciled to God. And if you're on this stream and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Call upon the name of the Lord today. Trust him. Lay all of your sinfulness, your unrighteousness, all of your rebellion, all of your self-sufficiency, all of your self-righteousness, all of you, I, all of your I can do it attitude that says I don't need God. Lay all of that at Jesus because he, he took it upon himself on the cross in your place so that you can be reconciled to God, made right with God, relationally and legally, now standing secure in Jesus Christ. Would you trust him today? Father, I pray that today we would be drawn into more faith because of the great love with which you've loved us. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever.
Thank you again for joining us for OPBC Online. It's a joy to be able to provide this each week, but we can't wait till we're back together, worshiping together the way we were designed as God's people. And today, if you have heard the gospel through this message and you have responded in faith to Jesus Christ, we want to invite you to reach out to us. We want to know so we can celebrate with you because there's no better news in the middle of our world today than the fact that Jesus changes lives. And if he's changed your life, we want to hear about it. So would you reach out to us? We have a gift for you if Jesus has done that work in your heart. We want to help you uh, along the way in your walk with Christ. And so we want to send this book to you. Uh, Need to know. It's just a little book that will help you in the first steps or in continuing steps in following after Christ. And we'll send this to you free of charge. We'll mail it to your house. We want to encourage you to just start reading through it. And we want to connect with you, to pray with you, to pray for you, and to just encourage you through your walk with Christ. So would you reach out to us at office at Baptist.org or send us a message here on Messenger if you're on Facebook and just let us know what Jesus has done in your life and we want to celebrate with you. As we go now as the people of God into the world that needs the hope of Jesus Christ, let's remember who we are and that we're called to proclaim the excellencies of Jesus. Would you read our benediction with this? But you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation.